So in this video, I'm gonna give you seven tips to kickstart 2022. And these are things that I do at the start of every year and some tips that I think will make a really big difference to your photography. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. I got the best toy ever as a Christmas present. Just let me finish this and subscribe and print. It's a label maker. <laughs> I've wanted one of these for so long. There we go, just chop that off. And this bit always sticks to you, I don't know why. Don't know what that is. Anyway, yeah, my wife got me that. I am very unorganized. Hopefully that's gonna help, probably won't, but we'll, we'll see. Okay, so what I wanna do is go through seven things that I, I feel that make a big difference when you're going into 2022. Some of these are just ideas and some of them are things that I do every time at the beginning of each year and they really help my photography. So the first one, we'll get straight into them, is start a project or plan a project out for the year. It's such a good idea to have a project. I mean, that's a good tip in, in life in general, really, just to have a project, have something you're working on throughout the year. And there's no time better than the start of the year to do that. This could be anything. Um, I had a woodland project where I, I um, you know, took woodland photos last year, and that was the, the year before that I was doing all that. This year, I, I've got um, a project called Black and Gold, which I'll talk more about in another video. But there's lots of things you could do. Here's some photos from an amazing woodland photographer um, called Lee Dory. Um, and he's taken these same set of trees at three different um, times in, in the year. So the three different seasons. I think that lo looks really good. And Millie, who's a, a masterclass um, member, and he's posted in the community recently that we have where we, we, we post images and share ideas and things. These 12 photos of the same tree in every month of the year. And I think that's just so fantastic. So thanks for sharing that looks really good but you could do something like um, decide to shoot abstracts or decide to shoot um, ICM or, or something like that whatever you do have a project it'll definitely help you in your photography going forward okay the second one is learn a new skill in Lightroom um, Lightroom or Photoshop for that matter is a, such an important part of the photography process of producing that final image and if you can improve your Lightroom skills then you're going to improve your photography also it helps you to visualize when you're in the field as well knowing what you can do to that image so you know it might just be something simple like let's take this image for, for example you might just want to learn how to change the color um, of the, the tweak the hue um, so you might just think okay well you know I'm just going to learn this HSL slider and learn and understand it a little bit more you know what does the luminance do in here and, and how's that going to affect the image and as you're doing that learn things around that skill as well so if you're learning the HSL slider learn the color wheel, wheel theory so learn about the actual colors and how they blend together really well. And that will definitely help your images. So learning a new skill in Lightroom, that's the second tip. Okay, the third one, we'll stick in Lightroom, is look back at your photos for the last 12 months. It's such a good idea to give yourself a pat on the back at this time of year. You know, just as you're going into the new year, give yourself a pat on the back, look at those great photos and say, yep, they really worked. But then be a little bit more critical. The ones that didn't work, understand why they didn't work. For instance, so if I go into my images here from last year, so say I go into my three star images here, you know, I might go through these and we'll look at my four star ones. These are, these are the ones that I feel with the best images of the year, my portfolio images. And there happens to be, I don't know how many is the 16 images. So they're the ones that I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back. These are technically perfect or as good as I can get them. And yeah, there's improvements I can make to them, but really I don't wanna be critical about those images. But the three star ones, the ones that didn't quite work, I can maybe go to them and think, okay, what could I do differently? So for instance, on this image here, you know, this is an image where I think feel like when I, I shot here, I probably should have gone a little bit lower to, 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 to look at the patterns a little bit more on, on the floor. Um, and just thinking about that, and, and maybe, you know, speaking to a friend or getting a few photography friends around and going through each other's images and critiquing those images, but just looking back over your, your images and seeing how you can improve will definitely help your photography going in, into next year. Okay, on to the fourth point. And that is about learning to slow down and pre-visualize the image. This is a bit of a tip really, but it's something that I feel is so, so important 
that if you want to take your photography to the next level, just improve it a little bit, then this just makes such a big difference. So um, I was watching a video from Adam Gibbs, actually. Um, I'll link it in the description. Um, in fact, I can put it up here, can't I? I'll, I'll, I'll put a link here. And he was talking about a shot in Torridon um, of these trees on the mountainside of these amazing Caledonian pines. And just the, the, the level that he went into, just think about just the position of those trees and visualizing what it would be like afterwards. Um, you know, just thinking about this one tree and, and just moving his camera just a, a small amount. And to do that, you've got to slow down. Um, and Adam's a perfect example of that. You know, he's a very deliberate photographer. Another photographer like that is Ben Horn as well. Um, he shoots large format film. They just do everything very slow. So. I am a great believer in slowing down. I'm not very good at it myself because <laughs> I get a little bit manic, but if you do slow down, you're gonna improve your photography. So just try that um, and, and see if you can just stop, have an apple, best bit of advice ever, um, look at the scene, observe, and just think really carefully and meticulously about the position of your, of your tripod. Okay, onto the fifth one. This is one, again, a little bit more planning involved, but plan three or four locations that you're gonna to go to in the year, but plan them in a lot of detail. So do a lot of research, think about you know, where you're gonna go, um, you know, look at the maps, look at the weather conditions, the best time of year to go. Um, it might even be somewhere really local, a tree that you've passed, but just think about the best time to, to go and photograph it, rather than just thinking, oh, I think I'll go today to photograph that tree or I'll, I'll walk up that hill plan it a little bit more, you know, think about when the light's gonna be best, because it might be that that particular location is best in the winter or best in the summer or best in the autumn. So if you plan it a little bit more, I guarantee that'll improve your photography. I talk about this a lot in um, Mastering the Art of Landscape Photography 2, and I show you my planning for woodland photography, vistas and seascapes. Um, so if you've seen that, you'll, 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 you'll understand what that's like, but planning's just so, so, so important. You just see the end product of what, what my, myself and other professional photographers and amateurs um, do, but it's 90% it's in the planning. I spend days and days and days planning, so I can't stress that enough. Think of three or four locations, plan them out, Think of exactly what you're gonna try and photograph there, look at maps, look at other people's photographs, and it'll definitely improve your photography. Okay, on to the sixth one, which is probably my favorite, and this is all about this, and it is printing your images. So there is nothing better than getting a print like this um, and seeing it come out of the printer or get arriving in the post. And it, it transforms your photography, to be honest, because it brings it to life. And, and unless you do it, I don't think there's any, any words I can say that will make it as exciting as it actually is. So if you haven't printed your images, please, please, if you do none of the other things, print your images. It's not that expensive to do online. It'll be cheaper than driving to, to somewhere to photograph. Um, you know, you can get a print this size for, you know, between, I'd say, 10 and $30, um, depending on the printer you go to. The other recommended recommendation I'd say is don't go to a big printer, go to a small printer, somebody that cares about um, their printing. Um, I'll link a few in the description below in the UK that I know of, and there's one in the US that I think is probably quite good as well. Um, and I, I'd also say use um, a printer that uses um, sort of fine art paper, so like Photospeed paper, Hamuli paper, Canson paper, because you'll get better results. Um, so just print your images, it just, is so, so exciting when you get a, um, a printed image. Okay, onto the final point, and that is investing in some education. So um, we all spend money on gear. We all spend money on new tripods, new lenses, new cameras, and that's good. It actually probably does improve our photography, not because we've got new gear, because it gets us excited and motivated about photography. But what I'd say is, we don't invest enough in ourselves. So great, you're watching this YouTube video, that's a little bit of education, um, but I don't think there's anything as good as, as, as actually doing a, a dedicated course. So, you know, ideally go and do a one-to-one -one with somebody um, or join a, a group workshop, but if you can't afford that or if, or if you, 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 there's nobody who does one-to-ones in your area, 
then um, you can consider an online course like my Master in the Art of Landscape Photography. There's a link in the description um, with a discount code as well if you, if you are considering that. And there's other courses as well. Don't just consider mine. There might be another teacher that you prefer, but just invest in yourself. If you invest in yourself and you improve your skills through learning, then that's a good way of making a step change in your photography. And that's it, they're the seven things. I think if you do just a few of those things, your photography will be more enjoyable, you'll get better, and um, yeah, it'll, it'll just be fantastic. Printing, do that, please. <laughs> it's, really, it's really, really, really good. Okay, that's it for, for this week's video. I am now off to plan um, my first trip of 2022, which is a trip to the Cairngorms in Scotland, which I'm really, really excited about. I'm gonna do some winter hiking there, hopefully, if we get some snow. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. Until next Sunday, bye.